Hi, so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to build a uh, bracket and pivot point for uh, a galvanized steel antenna mast on the back of my chimney. It'll hide this uh, current construction I have, which is basically a uh, vertical dipole cut for 161 megahertz and a uh, antenna for ADSB um, and tracking aircraft. And um, right now they're both visible from the front and the back of the house and they're kind of ugly looking and I want to make it uh, low visibility. So basically the plan is going to be to uh, put a 10 foot piece of uh, galvanized steel fence top rail on a pivoting bracket. Uh, the bracket will sit about the bracket will sit about uh, two feet below the top of the chimney and the bracket will have a pivot point on it where the galvanized steel mast can pivot up and down as needed. Um, the reason for this, uh, you know, most of you who watch my videos um, know that I like to have a stealthy uh, antenna so that my neighbors don't see it and I don't have to look at it from the front of the house. It's not a covenant controlled neighborhood or a uh, homeowners association neighborhood, but I like to, you know, respect my neighbors' views and not have them look at ugly antennas. My wife doesn't like them either and like I said, I'm not crazy about seeing them all from the front of the house. So basically the chimney uh, will block the view of the uh, mast when it's in this down position from the back of the house so my neighbors won't have to see it from there. And when it's also down the uh, roof line of the house will uh, block the view of it from the front of the house. So it won't be visible until I need it. I'll just uh, pull it up with a uh, quarter inch steel cable and some pulleys. It'll pop it up. That'll take about a minute um, and it'll be useful. Um, what's on there uh, right now is just the two the 162 megahertz antenna as well as the ADSB antenna. I'll be able to put more antennas on it because it'll be a little bit sturdier mast than the uh, thin PVC that I'm using right now. So the bracket will be attached by um, some lag bolts to the chimney, to the brick in the chimney, and uh, the bracket will allow me to pivot the mast up and down as needed. And so now I will drill the hole for the pivot point uh, at the bottom of the mast. And then I'll drill the hole to the bottom. bolt through and that will be the pivot point for the tilt over mast. And next I'll drill the mounting bracket for the, uh, the mast. So the mast will pivot on this. All right, and then we'll drill the other side. So now the bracket is drilled on both sides and uh, we'll test fit the mast in the bracket. Um, you can kind of see this, this part of the bracket will go up against the chimney and the mast will be in here and pivot right here. So let's uh, put that in right there and right here all the way through. So this will be up against the chimney and the mast will pivot on that. It'll be in this down position most of the time when you're not using it, so it won't be up and visible. But once it's up, uh, it'll pivot up along this point right here and into the upright position with uh, some... Alright, so to give you a better idea of what I'm going to do, this is going to be the bracket. It's going to go down here about two feet below the top of the chimney. This is the back of the chimney. And this uh, galvanized steel mask will sit in here and pivot up and down on it. Now up above here, I'll put a couple of uh, pulleys um, to allow it to tilt the mast up and secure it. Uh, it'll secure it down below um, on the ground or on the side of the house, um, keeping it up while I'm using it. And then when I'm done, uh, it'll allow me to lower it back down uh, and be out of the way and have no visibility whatsoever. Okay, so I've marked where the bracket's going to go and now I'm going to use a concrete bit uh, to drill the holes in through the brick. You want them to go in far enough so that your anchors hold really well. And 
then uh, once that's all done, you can tap in your anchor just gently. You don't want to hurt too much. And there, it's ready to go. And you can move on to the next one. And now I'm gonna mount the bracket, screw all the screws in. Get it set up a little bit. Don't like putting them all the way in here. They're all good and tight, and snug. The brackets in there pretty good. So now we're gonna test fit the mask in the bracket and see how this all comes together. And that the bolt in right here. And let's put the bolts on real quick. We're not gonna tighten down. It doesn't really need to be tightened down because this is just a pivot point. But you will want to use a, a lock washer in the final assembly and tighten that down pretty good so that your washer, your pivot bolt doesn't disappear on you. Anyway, you can see it's in the laying position. It is, with pulleys, once this is finalized, uh, this will go up and down on that. So here's oh. kind of an idea of how it works. It's not fully complete yet. i got to adjust it. You definitely want to have some kind of a foot on the bottom of the support um, so that you don't damage your roof. You probably want actually a flat piece of a small flat piece of wood or maybe even a extra scrap of shingle but uh that right now that foot's way too tall and um these antennas are actually going to be lowered down on the mast a little bit so they don't stick out there's it but there's it in the deployed position you can see the full length of the mast the uh the top of the chimney the flat part of the top of the chimney is 16 feet above the ground and uh with the eight foot extension uh to the bottom of the PVC is uh, 24 feet, so that will definitely give some more height when the, uh, the full antenna is deployed. Alright, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to connect the pulley mechanism that will allow the uh, cable to slide and pull up the, uh, the uh, antenna mast. So I got a couple of these pulleys from the local hardware store. Put these uh, the steel wire on it because it will help keep the, uh, keep the cable from popping out. Um, out of the out of the pulley area so keep it in there but basically the mechanism is going to work like this I'll have a pulley here probably close to the edge pulley down here and this other um, uh, roller mechanism right here about the middle we'll have the cable come up over go under the roller mechanism over the other pulley and then out toward uh, where the mast will will be uh, pivoted up and down on the end here uh, I put a little groove just real quick and dirty so that the uh, cable will slide on it this whole board um, will be uh, using some construction adhesive. Will be adhesive uh, um, attached to the top of the uh, top of the chimney, which is just covered with uh, mortar. So I didn't want to screw anything into it because that's not really all that strong, and the construction adhesive will be more than enough. This is not going to take a lot of force, um, so this should be more than adequate uh, for the pulley mechanism to be attached. To it. Now the pulley mechanism is fully assembled. Um, this will be the uh, part that goes down to the ground on this side. This is just to keep some tension on it with this other pulley. And then this side here will be attached to the mast. So uh, you'll be pulling it actually the other direction, um, but you can kind of get an idea how this will work. So this will keep the cable from getting all gouged and scraped up and everything. And uh, these will keep this, these rollers, which is actually a hinge from a garage door, believe it or not. Uh, we'll keep the, a little bit of tension on these pulleys here so that uh, it doesn't slip out of the groove and then of course 
We've got these wires up here to keep it captured. But the idea is pull it up from the ground using this mechanism. Pretty simple, pretty quick and dirty. All right, so next I'm going to attach the pulley mechanism. You want to make sure it's lined up uh, where the antenna is going to be sitting and uh, lined up with where roughly your pulley is going to be going. Uh, squeeze out some construction adhesive because this surface is very uneven. So that's another reason that this stuff uh, can be useful. Make sure you get a good bead, fill in any gaps that there may or may not be. Uh, you should put enough, you, gotta need, you, you need a lot. And uh, don't worry about that coax, that will get uh, re repositioned later on. Okay, so once the, you're cock the crap out of it, you want to make sure this is still lined up with everything. Properly positioned. A little bit extra there. Let's move it back and forth to kind of get it set up. And make sure you have a little bit of overhang. Caught gun that way. Alright, so this is going to take a few hours to set up. So. Now one of the last things I'm going to do in the mass construction is uh, put one of these eye bolts through the mast so that uh, the steel cable that goes over the pulleys will have an attachment point. Uh, they'll just drill straight through, put this bolt in, and, uh, and call it done. So now I'll just uh, put the eye bolt on, put it on. Tighten it down. So next, I'll thread the cable through the eye bolt, and I'll use one of these simple cable nuts to uh, make sure it's secure. You don't have to leave. So once these are snug down, everything must be tight. You don't want the cable slipping out through. You want kind of want to make sure that the other part of the cable is also in this little notch that helps to keep it snug. Um, and then uh, you're pretty much ready to go. No. So for mounting the antennas to the galvanized steel mast, I just use uh, PVC T fittings cut so that they fit partially around or wholly around, and then I use, use uh, band clamps to hold them on. It actually offers a pretty good permanent solution uh, that'll last a few years. Uh, this is intended that I change these around from time to time, so they don't have to last, you know, 20 years. But uh, two or three years is more than enough for uh, my experimental purposes. Alright, so the basic plane, you just uh, unhook it from this hook up here, um, pull it gently up to get it started. You want to go slowly because you don't want to bang too hard. Um, once it's fully up, I loop this around here a little bit, that uh, eye loop right there, and then I hook it to here. And that's it, it's up there stable, it's not going to come down. Uh, to get it to come back down, I just uh, give it a little wiggle to bounce off the uh, the, the edge up there and uh, the weight will slowly pull itself down over the pulleys and I gently lower it to the roof uh, the same way I put it up. Of course there's a lot of other ways that you could do this. I'm sure you can come up with other ways. This is what I came up for my situation and it's done. Alright, so as you can see, the basic idea is sound. Um, the individual little masslets that uh, the antennas are on, I need to make them a little thicker, as I mentioned earlier. I, I still haven't done that yet. But I wanted to put something up there to get a basic idea of how it works. And you can see it fully functions. It's locked up down there on the bottom. Um, but uh, basically, it works pretty well. Um, and it gets them up uh, about 25 feet from the, the top of the uh, galvanized steel post. sometimes. Hate when that happens. Not fun. Uh, fully functioning mast is up there. 
the individual little posts that each antenna is on. They need a little bit of work making them a little bit sturdier, but the basic idea works uh, just like that.